Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our dear sister another hearty amen for that beautiful, beautiful selection of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you to the both of you, to the band, for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you. Were it not for grace, we wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much, my sister. It is indeed a joy to be back worshiping with you again. I've been coming here since being invited by my, my, my Oakwood brother, Joe Jordan, back in the late 80s. I had hair back then, so you probably won't remember me now if some of you were then were there back then. So it's always good to come back to Tamarin. I want to thank the Most High for allowing me to have life and for allowing you to have life and for us to have life abundantly in the midst of COVID and, and all of the darts that the enemy tries to bestow on humankind. It is always good to be grateful just to be alive. What will we do with this precious gift? It's determined by you. Will you give the Most High his honor and his glory and his praise? What will you do with your life? I also want to thank Brother Garcia for being so very kind to me this morning. And it's good to see him again. It's good to see Brother James again and all of you yet again. And to my Oakwood classmate, uh, Pastor Sylvester, my prayers and thoughts are with him and his family. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah, I'm pretty sure some of you must already know what this verse has packed. If you know a little something, you know about this verse right here. This, this verse packs a punch now, okay? So you better watch out when you, when you turn the pages and ooze up on this verse, okay? Don't come on it real hard. Just ooze up on it because it will, it will hurt you now, okay? It will hurt you now. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, when you have it, please say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I shall read in your hearing. Jeremiah 29. Verse 11 through 14. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. And my sermon title for this morning is, You Just Don't. You just don't know. Let us pray. To the most kind heavenly Father, the ancient of days, our Elohim, Yahuwah, and to your only begotten Son, our Savior and Redeemer, Yahusha, and to your Holy Spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh, I petition thee this morning. I need thee. For if I go about this message without thee, I am a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. But if I remove myself of self and, 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 and allow you to take over and allow for your words to come out of my mouth, and allow myself to be a medium, to be a vessel for thee, that your will will be done. And if there be any praise, any praise whatsoever, let it go to Calvary. 
in the power of your son's name, Yahusha Hamashiach, Jesus, our Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'd like to begin with a song that is more like a prayer. How many of you want the Lord to use you? You want the Lord to use you until he uses you up. I want him to use me. He has given each and every one of us gifts and talents. And he requires for us to use those talents for his glory. Because somewhere I read on Judgment Day, he will ask you, what have you done with those talents? As we've heard, we've seen the music folk here that they're sharing their talents in music, our sister, our brother, the musicians. They're using their gifts and talents. I'm trying to use mine. What about you? God has given you gifts and talents, and if you are sitting on it, Shame on you. I'm here to shame you enough to let you know. You better get off sitting on those talents. And you better use it for his glory. Because when he asks you, sister, sister, brother, brother, I gave you the talent to sing, to speak, to, to, to be gracious to other folk, to be selfless. I gave you the talents to cook, to, to write, to, to do these things for my kingdom. What will you say to him? Lord, I, you know, I didn't have a, a father. Or Lord, you know, I didn't have this. I didn't have that. That will be too late. I'm here to tell you, use what he has given you for his glory. He will make room for it. You just use it because he's coming back. And he's going to require a word from you on what you did and how you used the talents that he loaned you. So I want to be used. This song, listen to the words, use me. Spirit be mine, 
Lord, my life is so worthless, so cold Without your spirit divine Yes, Lord, use me I am trusting in you I surrender control Trusting in you, oh yes I am. I surrender control of my life. Now, Lord, carry me through. Hallelujah. I want to be used. How about you? My title, You Just Don't Know. What does it mean? If we can get slang, I'm from inner city St. Louis, Missouri. So if I can get a little slang with you, I'm going to really break down that title. You know, you just brought a car. And your friends ask you, how does it drive? And how does it handle? And how much did it cost? And you feel so good about that car. And when you start to brag about that car, and you say, oh, it smells so good. And the tires are so nice and shiny. And, 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 and my car payments is nothing but a blessing. And it, it, when I tap, on the, on the accelerator, it just shoots off like a rocket. Child, you just don't know how good this car is. You get it now? It's a slang. You just don't know. It's when something is such a blessing, it's so cool, it's the bomb. You say, you just don't know. You get it? Before I begin, as I do with places the Most High has allowed me to go, I, I always like to leave a little uh, commercial. This is my 14th year in a row reading the Bible through. And I tell you, what a book. What a book! If you love General Hospital, if you love one life to live, hmm? If you love Dynasty, I know I'm dating myself. I'm talking about the one in the 80s. If you love soap operas, if you love uh, these movies that are coming out with the superheroes, the Bible's got all that in there. If you want a juicy love story, read the word. If you want to laugh, you know, in that word, there's a donkey that can actually talk. Hello, Francis, the talking mule. If you want to be entertained, to be inspired, to go out and be motivated, read the word. If you want to be saved, read the word. Every year of those 14 years, I learned something new. It is true. It is his living word. And every morning I read about three chapters. Starting January 1st, you read Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Simple like that. Like that. You got a busy schedule, but are you too busy for the most high? He allows for your heart to beat. Don't you at least have time to learn about him? And when you read about him, and when you pray with him, you're building a relationship. Let this word be your vitamin. It is mine. 
Every morning when I do my nine miles, I have the Bible app and I look up what I'm to read and I tell you, I glide right through the day. That's the high point of my day. It is my daily vitamin. And this Bible reading plan reads like a novel. It, 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 it's chronologically correct. For it starts with Genesis and then it goes to Job and then Exodus. But each story builds on the other so that you start to get a full aerial view of what God's word is all about. And when you're done on December 31st, you have a hallelujah moment because you figured out he really loves you. And he's doing everything he can to save you. So if you want that Bible reading plan, I will send it to my dear brother, uh, Brother Garcia. It's six pages that will change your life. I'm telling you here, I, I, I feel excited. Every morning. And when you miss a day, just go back and catch up. You will, you'll thank me. You'll thank me. Trust me. You'll thank me. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. The preamble, the preamble. Judah, the southern kingdom, when we look at our verse here, Jeremiah was talking. So let's give you some history in our preamble. Judah, the southern kingdom, was the last kingdom standing after Israel, the northern kingdom, was defeated and displaced or scattered as it were by the Assyrians in 722 BC. They were scattered and they were captured because of their apostasy against the Most High. That is the act of refusing to continue to follow, obey, or recognize the laws, statutes, and precepts of Yahuwah, God, our Heavenly Father. So the Most High allowed Assyria to be the arm of his judgment against them. So approximately 136 years, 136 years later, Judah, the southern kingdom, continues in the ways of Israel, the northern kingdom, in their apostasy against the Ancient of Days. After laboring long with his stiff-necked, disobedient Chiron, as my great-grandmother would say, the Most High sends in King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon as his arm of judgment against his wayward children. In 586 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar defeats and takes Judah into captivity in Babylon. So our text picks up with the prophet Jeremiah who was persecuted tremendously for prophesying a very unpopular word from the Most High, that Judah would be in Babylonian captivity for 70 years. And nobody wanted to hear that. So now Judah, as it were, is in captivity in Babylon. Jeremiah has sent a letter to the Judean captives held in Babylon who are tremendously discouraged, despondent, and disillusioned. He has given them a word from the Most High, letting them know that he has not forgotten them. Because of their apostasy against him, Yah, God, used King Nebuchadnezzar as his arm of judgment against Judah. He used a heathen king as his rod of correction, as his strap of comeuppance, as my great-grandmother used to say. Sometimes Yah, God, has to use people and places and things to get our attention. Sometimes he has to send out the Nebuchadnezzars on us to get our attention, to straighten us out. And when he does that, you better thank him because he still sees some worth in you. Oh, because if he stops, you might have a Job situation. He said, okay, Satan, go and do what you got to do because they just ain't going to get it. 
You don't want that. You don't want that. So if he's dealing with you, he sees some gold buried deep down within you. And he's trying to bring those gold deposits to the surface so that you can see the gold you have in you. He sees it. And he's waiting for you to bring it up to the surface. Oh, don't take too long, though. So when he sends those Nebuchadnezzars out to you, don't you dare complain. You draw closer. You read his word. You get this Bible reading plan. Hallelujah. You pray. You read. And he will open up to you what he has for you. So don't get mad at those Nebuchadnezzars. He's sending them there because he sees something in you. For I know the plans I have for you, he says. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's what Jeremiah told the Israelites and what I'm telling you here today. He's got plans for you. Prosper. The word prosper is defined as succeed in material terms. Be financially successful. Flourish physically. Grow strong and healthy. Today our world embraces the first couple of definitions to the word prosper. The secular view only seems to connect prosper only to financial gain. But what if prosper means for you to be healthy spiritually? Prosper for you to use your talents for his glory, bringing other folks into the knowledge of our Savior. What if Prospering means building up the kingdom of God. Make sure you understand what prosper can mean. It doesn't always mean money, and then sometimes it may mean money. You don't know how you're going to pay that doctor bill, how you're going to pay that gas bill, how you're going to pay that car note, and he finds a way to bless you. His goal is for you to prosper. But you got to have a relationship with him, though. You can't be no, 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 no sunny day Christian. You only follow him when things go well. You got to be there when it's raining in your life. You got to be connected. You got to be connected when it's sunny in your life. Be an all weather Christian. That's where you get your blessing. It's all a test. Remember, we're all little Jobites, huh? Jobites. Remember his story? We're all being tested. And if the Most High and the enemy is having a discussion about you, what will the Most High say about you? Will he brag on you? When Satan comes and says, yeah, I, I, when he says to Satan, hey, you know, did you see such and such? Huh? What is Satan going to say? You shouldn't even bring up that name because they don't mean you no good. Would he say that about you? Or will the Most High brag on you and have faith in you that when he takes you through, you're going to become gold at the end of your journey? Hmm. Hmm. You know, my, my great-grandmother was from Tennessee. And I do this black history program, and I honor her because it was through her that I learned the Martin Luther King speeches, and through her, I met so many people of the Civil Rights Movement. It's through her. She was born the daughter of a Tennessee slave. She helped to raise me, for she was almost 70 when I was born, in the 60s. And, and, and her father, her father, the woman who raised me, her father was a slave. Slavery wasn't that long ago, y'all. For the woman that changed my diaper, her dad was a slave born in 1857. When Lincoln freed the slaves in 1863, he was six, seven years old. She used to say in her Tennessee accent, sometimes God's got to whoop our butts to get our attention. What else did she used to say? Child, and you just don't know what he got prepared for you when you got some act right. Do, do, do I need to translate that? Do I need to put it in, 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 in English, my sister, my brothers? Do I need to put it in regular English? Y'all know what I'm talking, right? Man, she used to say some things, I tell you. 
And I understood very clear what she said. Does he have to send Nebuchadnezzar out to get your attention? He had to do it to me certain times. I'm a fourth generation Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, yes, I can say that. I'm going somewhere with this. Just bear with me. Oh, yes, I, I can sing the St. Louis, the, 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 the Adventist songs. I remember when it was MV. Does anybody remember MV? We're not talking about no AY. We're talking MV, huh? Christ before us, Christ behind, Christ on every side. Oh, how many remember that? Volunteer, volunteers, missionary volunteers. I grew up in that era. Church was over. You couldn't wait till sundown. So you could go buy some veggie food, huh? Get some ready burger and watch Sounder. We always watch Sounder. I, I, knew, the, I knew the script, you know? It was always a movie, and it was Sounder. I, I'm just thinking, to, I'm sorry, I was just thinking to myself, Sounder. It was always Sounder. But I remember doing the Adventist thing, knowing the memory verses growing up and got, getting the Jolly Rancher because you said it right. And then the next week, you couldn't wait to be the first to memorize, to say the memory verse, not knowing that one day you're going to need those verses. Those little simple verses you thought were simple. One day, as you grow up, as you walk this Christian walk, you see, we at Venice, we have this Adventist credit card. It's a MasterCard, huh? And it's Adventist credit card. And we feel like when we have problems, we just flash that card and our problems go away. But what happens when they linger? Were we taught that in Christian school? When they linger, you just get back on your knees, you just do the R, do we get discouraged and walk away? What happens when we are being bombarded by the Nebuchadnezzars of life, are we prepared to continue on in adversity? I say this as a former probation correction officer bombarded with religious liberty issues, hate, being talked about, being scandalized, even sending someone out to take me out to my apartment. Oh, but I'm going to have to come back and tell you those stories and how I made it over. And if it wasn't for how I was reared, knowing who he is, I couldn't have gotten through that. So this today, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about our, 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 our text. Plans for us to prosper. He's got stuff for us that you just don't know. You don't know what he has planned for you, and you don't know how he's going to use you if you allow him, and he that you don't know who he will send to bless you. You just don't know. Are you with me this morning? I'm taking my time. Just follow me as I follow the Holy Spirit. You just don't know. Oh, whoo, you just don't know. Yes, 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 yes. Now, for the Constitution. That was the preamble. Somewhere I heard, if you've never been in a mess, oh, it's so hard to have a message. Somewhere I've heard, if you've never been tested, it's difficult to have a testimony. Somewhere I've heard, if you've never had trials, how will you handle tribulation? Somewhere I've heard, if you've never been in a storm, how you going to feel when you get wet? Somewhere I've heard, if you've never been broken, how will you know what it feels like to be fixed? Oh, I'm telling you this morning. Hebrews 12, 6 and 7 says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? Count it all joy when you're going through. 
Just know he will never leave you or forsake you. So I want to share with you what he's done for me. You see, I can tell you what he's done for somebody else, but I may get it wrong. I may get some of the facts wrong. I can tell you what scripture says, and through faith, he would lead me to tell that story the right way. But I know what he's done for me. And when he's done something for you, you can't sit on it. You got to tell it. Because no one can tell your story better than you. And if God has been good to you, you tell somebody. Because you don't know, as a former correction officer, around co-workers who committed suicide, and you just didn't know where they, what they were thinking or what they were doing, and then to have some of them come up and say, you know, because the inmates ask you to lead the religious service, because the religious volunteers didn't come in, how did they know that you knew scripture? I said, maybe it's this Adventist Vaseline I'm using. Maybe it's this Adventist lotion. I don't know how they knew. But when the religious volunteer didn't show up, they said, I said, well, we're going to have to take y'all back to, the, to your cells. Mr. Johnson, can you lead? Tell us a Bible story. I said, and at that time, I was trying not to let them know that I was a believer. Because, see, I had to be strong and hard, you know, like my other co-workers. But, you know, they used to tell us that it takes an inmate 10 minutes to figure you out. 10 minutes. That, that pets, babies, inmates. Boy, they, they can figure you out. And, and, and I was trying my best to be like the co-workers, hard. I didn't even curse right. They even laughed when I would try to curse. I just didn't add certain words together, and it just didn't sound right. So they knew something was different with me, although I tried my best. I said, maybe it's this Adventist lotion I am wearing. So then when they asked me, Mr. Johnson, can you lead out? I knew too much growing up. My mother invested and was, it worked hard to keep us in Christian school. And for me to turn around and deny the Most High, then when I need him, guess what? He's going to deny me before the Father, right? That goes, what goes around, come back around. Remember that, y'all? When it is your time to witness, don't you be afraid. You open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Because that's what I'm doing this morning, right? So, I said, yeah. Well, I, and I was battling with pride and, and all that kind of good stuff. I had no excuse. Fourth generation of this, I had no excuse. So I went and I, I started talking to them. And I let the Holy Spirit move. And I started to actually like it. I said, man, this is why he put me here. He places you in situations for his time. And when he places you there, don't walk and look side to side. You keep looking forward. He will open the doors. He will open your mouth and put the words right there. You just do what you need to do and let him do the rest. Because when you do, you just don't know what he has planned for you. A few years ago, this is the Constitution now. This is the Constitution. A few years ago, I was asked to do a week of prayer in uh, one of our Adventist institutions. And uh, I, I said, well, Lord, I, I want you to lead me with the ministry that you've given me. And he's taken me in and out of the country and done all those things. You know, much is given, much is required. That's where I read. Somewhere I did hear that. Have y'all heard that too? Much is given, much is required. So if he's given you much, he requires much in return. Yeah, I didn't fully understand that. Well, I went, and they asked me to go speak, and I said, yes, I'll, I'll speak. And I spoke twice a day for that week in one of our Adventist institutions here in this country. And, uh, as I, and then they asked me to take over the Bible class. And so I was taking over the Bible class. And, and it was all various tribes there. Do you all understand when I say various tribes there? I, I speak sometimes in, in Google Google language, they used to say, just to, so that you guys are following me. Various tribes were there at this, at this uh, Adventist high school institution. And, and so I started to talk, tell them stories and, and try to take the Bible stories and try to connect it so that they could understand it more. And we just had a wonderful time. And there in the back, a young lady from the dominant tribe, y'all know where I'm talking about, from the dominant tribe, was crying and just kept crying and crying. 
And I thought, well, 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 do I need to let her go to the bathroom and get her, get her face right? So after the program was over, I had to speak again that night. She came to me and said, I just want to thank God that you're here. And I thought, wow, I didn't know that was coming. And I said, okay, she, can I hug you? I said, sure. She says, and thank you for telling your stories because I can relate. And God brought you here for a time such as this because I wasn't thinking the right thoughts about myself. And being a former correction officer, I know what those thoughts were, you know. And I wasn't thinking the right thoughts about myself. And, and I wanted to do something to myself. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so I didn't want to come even to this school, but my parents made me come to the school. And, and I just want to say, I, I thank you. For, for making the scriptures come alive and, and, and in a way that I could understand it. So I told her, you know, I was a correction officer and I learned it the Adventist way. I could speak the Adventist language, but sometimes the Most High teaches you another language of the unchurched. And you got to learn that language. And so, so, so those who don't know, you got to know how to, what, what, what they say, dumb it down a little bit, huh? Use other words, make it so that they can understand, huh? So I had to learn that. And so she was telling me, thank you. And, you know, you said you went to a school that you got kicked out of. You know, my, my daddy went to that school, too. I wonder if y'all know each other. I said, oh, oh, all right, all right. I got to get going. That's how it went. Well, well, well. If we go back to 1983, 1984, I was at an institution, uh, Adventist institution. And uh, what was your real name, nameless, because, you know, Adventist. Grapevine. I know that, you know, so I, I, will, I will keep it anonymous now. Y'all are with me. And, 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 and I was there, me and my cousin and from St. Louis, and it, it, this was a, an Adventist institution, and, and I, I just remember we were the minority of the dominant tribe, if you know what I mean. And there were other tribes there, but the dominant tribe didn't feel so favorably to, to, to my tribe, if you, if, you, if you're with me. And uh, they sometimes made it known and but me and my cousin were not ones to play with. We were the ones that would strike back. We had the spirit of Peter, the spirit of David. I was aptly named. Uh, uh, we, we, we fought back and enjoyed doing so. And they saw very clear, very uh, uh, early on that we were the kind that we weren't going to sit back and, and, and take that. Although I did Martin Luther King's speeches, I sort of had a Malcolm X spirit, if you, if, if you will. How, how did that work out? How did that, how did that, how did that work out? So they knew early on, we don't play with these two right here. These two are the, the, the kind of knuckleheads. And we took pride in that. But yet that did not stop the dislike for our tribe, if you know what I mean. And they would do things to, 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 to uh, make sure we knew they didn't like us. And we would put it on blast, and we would say, hey, this is what they're doing to us. And I, the dean liked me. The assistant dean hated me. But his pet, the assistant dean, was a senior who really hated me and my cousin. And he used to talk about how his father was from South Africa. Now, at that time, I didn't know about apartheid. I didn't know about Mandela. I was just 15 years old. But he would talk and say that as if I was supposed to know and to understand where he was coming from. He, he would say, uh, I love South Africa. I sure wish this was South Africa. I didn't know what he meant. <laughs> oh, but he's going to make me know. And then he was our RA. So he would go down the hallways and every morning he would always give us a failing grade for having a cluttered room. If we were in church... The girls on one side, guys on the other. If everybody's talking, they'll look back and just see us. It took 27 conduct notations to be kicked out. Well, they made sure that every week we would have a conduct notation. They didn't like us and told us they're going to do everything in their power to get us out because that's the institution that doesn't need people like us. I can remember one time I was putting on my do-rag with my Murray's grease. Come on, can anybody, can anybody help me out this morning? Brushing my hair with waves like the Pacific Ocean. And I was brushing and my cousin was brushing and some of us from our tribe was just brushing our hair. And I remember the assistant dean who had an apartment there in the dormitory came up and just chewing his gum, just looked at us. <laughs> How do you mess up your pillowcases with all that stuff in your hair? 
So I, I said something, let's just say it wasn't very respectful and not for the church. I said something back to him and, and uh, he looked like he was reared up and I squared away and I said, come on, let's, let's go. I said, you down there with your wife or she gonna come up and carry you out? Cause I'm gonna lay you out. So he, he knew his goal was to get us out. But that's just to kind of let you know what we were going through. And whenever he'd walk around, he always had the pet, the senior from South Africa, just standing there, chewing the gum too. They were the chewing gum twins, if you know what I mean. So one day, all the conduct notations came together and the assistant dean and the uh, senior decided to go to the administration and say they've surpassed the limit. They saw it, and one week before school ended, we were expelled. I was very, very embarrassed. When I got there to the, the train station, my mother did, uh, well, Bruce Lee would have been proud of her. Uh, she did all kinds of stuff to me, her and my, her sister, my aunt, my cousin's mother, they were doing all kinds of stuff, you know, and, and, and then the train guy said, can y'all please take that outside, just take it outside. And I felt I let her down. So she put me back into a school there in St. Louis, a Christian school, not an Adventist school. And there I, I, I did everything to stay, you know, to, to have a high GPA, to let my mom know, this was before Oakwood, to let my mother know that she didn't waste, I wasn't a waste. But I never forgot those characters. And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna keep it, as the young people say, 100, 100, 100. I hate it those guys. I hated them because I didn't understand why they hated me so much, me and my cousin, and hated folk from our tribe. What did we do to them besides being slaves? So as a young person, I couldn't understand that kind of hate. So in return, I answered their hate with hate. And it lied dormant in me. But you see, when you decide that you want to follow the Most High, Use what he's given you. Ask him to take you places you don't really want to go to, to, to sharpen you. You don't know what's going to come up. He's going to take you places. You say, Lord, Lord, when I said I want to follow you, don't, don't, don't take me there, though. Don't, don't, don't take me there. You can't say that. It's all or nothing. So I was there to talk to the young people. But I was also there to be cleaned up. So the young lady said, I, the next day in class, I told my dad about you, and I think he knows you. I said, no, 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 he, 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 <laughs> no, he wouldn't know me. He wouldn't know me. And then I continued on. So she kept coming up to me after the program, crying. I said, boy, I just need to get some votes, because she is crying a river. She would just... <gasps> I just thank you. So I said, oh, okay, okay, I got to talk to everybody. Oh, all right, all right, praise God, praise God, oh, all right. And she's crying a lot. But then, then she said, the, 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 the principal said of the school, he says, look, in six months, we're having a big tournament of all different teams are coming from different cities. We want to know, would you be the speaker for that weekend? I said, sure. She said, okay. Well, six months later, I was back, and we had a wonderful time, and that Sabbath, everybody, we did, they, oh, they were doing so well, and I couldn't wait to get up and preach God's glory. And everyone was coming down and was shaking their hands, hugging them, and getting pictures with certain people I knew from when I was out at different schools. And all of a sudden, she came down the aisle again. I thought, oh, man, she's going to be crying again. So I was shaking hands and I was trying to act busy. So when somebody was there, I, hey, hey, hey. They were like, what you hugging me for? You already hugged me. I said, oh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Oh, Mr. Johnson, I'd like you to meet my dad. I said, all right, oh, 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 all right, all right. And then everyone that was there got quiet. So she said, uh, my, my dad, he says he really knows you and he wants to meet you and he wants to thank you. I said, for what? for what you're doing with me. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. I'm just a vessel, but you gotta be a vessel. So he wants to meet the vessel. I said, oh, you got jokes. So as he walked down, it was as if as you watch a movie, like everything got quiet. 
And like you know, in, in our kind of movies, it, you know, our movies seem to always have those sounds. You notice that? So it was like, and as he walked down, like Clint Eastwood, chewing the gum, just like he chewed the gum in 1984. Now, of course, it wasn't the long yellow hair, if you know what I mean, from that tribe. It was, it was he had a haircut like mine. Okay, I wasn't mad at him there, you know. But as he walked, the gait in his walk, the chewing the gun, was all the same. Now, I just got to preaching and singing for the glory of God. And you know, the devil works everywhere at all times. He never gives up. And here the devil was, right after the service, working in me. You get it? Y'all got to always be on guard, huh? Yeah? So as he's walking down, and I'm looking, I remembered the last time I saw him in 84, packing up my stuff. He said, see you later. Hope you'd never come back. And may God not be with you. And then I threw a shoe at him. And then he shut the door. That was the last time I saw this guy, and he had to be her father. Does the Most High have a sense of humor? And so he walks down the aisle, and everyone looks at me, hey, but John, you all right? I say, yeah. You know. And then I had to say, Lord, I wanted you to use me. I sang the song, Use Me. I want to be used. I feel like I mean it. But do we really mean it when we ask the Lord to use us? Because in order for us to be used, we got to go through boot camp, spiritual boot camp. And if we cannot get out of spiritual boot camp, we ain't going nowhere. We're a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. We want to be used. We got to hold on to his hand, close our eyes, and let him take us wherever he deems we need to go and trust 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 that he will get us through it because he ain't gonna try to take us to it if he ain't trying to bring us through it and I had to find out at the end of a sermon that I was preaching I had to really find out the essence of the relationship that the Most High wants to have with us what a time to have it, huh? Here I was having hatred in my heart after I just preached about the love of God. And when he came down, he said my name just like he said it in 84. Nothing changed. What's up, David? What's up, David? And I, hey, hey, and I said his name. We'll just call his name Bob. <laughs> and I said... What's up, Bob? Hey, man, I don't want to hold you up with all your friends, but um, I just, and this, his eye had water in it. And I just knew that it was a hole in the ceiling or something, because this, I just knew this man was incapable of crying. And he says, I just want to thank you for what you've done for my daughter. I said, well, I didn't do anything. He says, no, 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 you've been a vessel. And you allowed the Lord to use you. <laughs> I remember the old Dave, and I said, don't. Bring it. Why? I'm trying to listen to him. Why would he bring that up? So I say, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the daughter says, can I get a picture with all of us? I thought, no, no. So we got a picture, and I wish you could have seen the look on my face. When it was over, he says, do you have a card? I said, yeah, I thought, what, he's going to send assassins out to get me? I said, he's already done the job. What, what does he want to do more? And I said, here, I'll give you a call, man. I just want to talk to you about a few things. What? I said, he's going to apologize. Good. Because finally I realized I ain't let this stuff go. I thought I did, but I ain't let it go. So he left. So about a month later, I was talking to my wife. And my wife, Karina, is here. Would you raise your hand, Karina? Raise your hand. Yes, yes. She's a little on the shy side. There she is. And she 
we're in school, we were in school, and so, you know, funds are low and bills are funny, but we don't tend to be laughing. And she was telling us how, what the bills were gonna be for the next month and that our coffers were bare. And, 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 and because she was new to the Adventist faith, I knew I had to have that extra faith that even though I, if I didn't fully believe, I had to at least fake like it so that, because she was looking at me to be the leader. So I, I said, it's going to be all right. God's going to make a way. How much we need? I said, oh, we need that. Oh, wow. Woo. I said, well, he's rich in houses and lands. And I started quoting all, all the memory verses from when I was a little kid. Because you remember I told you you're going to need them when you get older, right? Right? So I started quoting them and quoting them and quoting them and quoting them. And then it was just too much discouragement in the room, so I had to walk out. So I said, oh, Lord, I don't know how we're going to make it through. But I know you promised. You said you got designed for us to prosper. And I started quoting Jeremiah 29. And I started remembering how they say, you just don't know what God got planned for you. So I started memorizing all that stuff, saying it to myself. So I walked out, I walked out inside, and, and then I, I got a call. I said, hello. Hey, David. And I said, oh, man. And as soon as I heard his voice, it brought me back to 1984 all over again. And I said, yeah, what's up, man? Because it was, I was, wanted to say, this is not a good time to call. He says, um, what's your address? And I said, what is he, he really going to send an assassin out to get me? I gave him my address, and he says, I just want to bless you with a little something for what you've done to my daughter. You don't know how much trouble I was having with her. And of all people, I tell you, you just don't know how God's going, who God's going to send. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. And remember, my, I'm being honest with you, my heart wasn't fully in the, in the preaching God-fearing mood right now because I was struggling with doubt and hatred towards him. I'm keeping it real with you. God, we got to pray for each other. This thing is a teamwork to get to the kingdom. huh? When you're strong and I'm weak, you help me. When I'm strong, you're weak, I help you. That's the way it's supposed to be. I don't want to come up here and, 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 and sound poetic and sound like I got it made. No, I've been speaking to too many inmates like that. You got to keep it real. Let them understand that they ain't the only ones that struggle. The speaker struggles. The singers struggle. Much is given, much is required. So I, I gave him my address. And I said, yeah, oh, okay, all right, all right. And then I went on. And I said, Lord, help me to have faith so that my wife can believe, so that we can do this thing together. Help me, Father, because I don't know where the money's going to come from, but I know you didn't bring me here to leave me. So I'm going to remember those memory verses when I was young. How dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, huh? David and Goliath, all of those stories that you learned when you were little, you're going to need them when you are an adult. Because you're going to be tested and tried in the fires. And it's those memory verses and, and, and the faith that comes in it that God will look on you and God will remember your struggle. And if your faith is the size of a mustard seed, you can still move a mountain. I know. I know. And so when he got off the phone, we went on. And as it were, a week came. My wife again is telling us the bills and so on and so forth. And it was like a replay of the week before. I went out and I went to the mailbox. I went to the mailbox and I saw a letter and it had his name on it. Bob. All right. I walked inside. And as I walked inside, I, un I looked out and I, yeah, 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 yeah. And I looked again. And I looked again, and I looked at his name. This man hated me. I hated him. And I looked at the figure, and I noticed, I remembered the figure she said we needed. And his figure was more than what we needed, plus some. And then I remembered the text. Plans for us to prosper. I was blessed by my enemy. Oh, you just don't know. The Most High used my enemy to bless me. What am I telling you this morning? 
that when you try to walk right, you're going to fall. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. But get back up. Get back up because you belong to somebody who sees worth in you. And if you have this relationship, if you're reading your word, that's why I told you about the Bible reading plan. Because I wanted to just give you, give you a problem without coming with a solution. You read every day. That's your vitamin. That's your daily vitamin. And don't be too busy because if you're too busy for him, he'll be too busy for you. When you start having cholesterol problems, when you start having heart problems, when you start having COVID problems, all those things, then you're going to need them then. Try a relationship with them now. Do it because you know it feels right. Do it because he commanded you to do it. Do it because you love him, because he first loved you. His plans are to bless you, to prosper you in ways you would never dream of. He will even let your enemy, who hates how you look, to end up being a blessing to you. The Most High has plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to go through and to do things, but you got to believe. You got to trust him. You got to know that he loved you so much to send his only begotten son. How many of you would do that? Would give up your child for somebody else? especially some knucklehead, stiff neck foe. How many of you would do it? Not many, but because he's boundless and omnibenevolence, all lovingness for us, he's doing whatever he can to save us. Even having your enemies bless you. So I'm here to let you know this morning, whatever you're going through, don't you dare give up on him because he's not giving up on you. And though you have fallen, don't get down in the mud. What did E.E. E. E. Cleveland used to tell us in his class at Oakwood, Dynamics of Christian Faith back in the 80s? He used to tell us this, when, not if, but when you fall. Don't fall on your face. Because if you fall on your face in this proverbial boxing ring with the enemy, you'll never be able to look up to see who's got a hand out to help you. But if you fall on your back... You can look up at least and see the hands of Yahushua Hamashiach reaching down for you to say, get up, let me fight this for you. And he will fight it for you so you can be down. But looking up, looking up, and that is where your salvation comes. It must be in the Most High. It must be in his son. He died for you because he sees worth in you. So don't you ever think that you ain't nobody. We got kicked out of school. We didn't feel like we were anybody. But if you ask him to show you how to be a better Christian, he's going to take you through now. And when he does, you can't be complaining because we got to get through this boot camp. Because if we don't get through it, we can never be a soldier in his army. But if you want to be a soldier in his army, you got to take his hand. Sometimes just ask him to put his hand over your eyes so you don't have to see what you're going through. But trust him to lead you. And he will lead you over those rocky paths, over those coals. And he will take you to where he has prepared for you. Because his plans is for you to prosper. Somewhere I read, oh, as we close, somewhere I read in Hebrew. Right there in Corinthians, I would say. 1 Corinthians 2.9. But as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Do you love him? Because he loved you to make mansions for you with your names on them. Do you want to go and be with him do you want to go and be with him because he's coming soon and very soon when you look about what's going on in our news and in our world and you read that bible you'll understand it's even at the doors you must be ready because he's got too much planned for us for us to miss out what he has planned for us 
Oh, you just don't know. God bless you.